Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on May 26, 2021. Uh, we've survived uh, uh, almost a little over four months of the Biden administration. Um, and uh, gosh, lots to talk about always. Uh, before we get into that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. <clears throat> and in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. <clears throat> so COVID, um, that's always in the news. And uh, <clears throat> gosh, it, it seems like we can never quite get away from it. And certainly one of the huge impacts, uh, excuse for the government, one of the biggest excuses the government has had for taking a bite out of our liberty uh, in this country. Now it's coming to light that a lot of the stories that came out about how this thing initially spread, um, it, you know, that it may have it actually, in fact, been from a Chinese lab. Certainly, there's been some conservative sources that have been reporting this and they have been, um, you know, panned. They've been uh, vilified. And now uh, Fauci himself is sort of flip flopping on this. Uh, before he was saying he thought this was completely from natural spread from somehow somebody ate a bat or something in a, in a wet food market uh, that just happened to be. Uh, next to a uh, high-level bio lab in yes, China, yes. where yes. I guess in we Wuhan, had some experiments in Wuhan, going in Wuhan on. China. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, now he's uh, finally saying that, yeah, it, uh, uh, you know, it's possible that it came from there now. Wow. And and part of this is because I guess they found that some of the initial people who were contaminated were some of the people who worked at this lab. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> unless they had a hunker, hankering to, you know, eat bat from the market next door. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, very likely that some of this gain of function research that was going on there uh, is is uh, the culprit. Uh, but you know, the, the, again, the story is not you know completely final. And given that we poo pooed the story for almost a year um, <laughs> and didn't. Uh, allow for an investigation, didn't push China into having investigators come there and check out the lab. Um, you know, who knows if we'll ever find uh, all of the uh, the truth to this story. But uh, that said, uh, transparency and the idea that, you know, uh, it, it's it really tells a story, I think, about the media and how corrupted by politics it's been in the last few years. And the idea that uh, if somebody comes out with um, a potential credible story, uh, how blind one side can actually be to it if it doesn't fit their narrative. It just absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Boy, you're, di you're digging us deeper and deeper, aren't you? <laughs> one thing's one thing's for absolute certain: YouTube is going to delete this video from their website. I don't care what Anthony Fauci said; it's going to delete it. We can't have these people, uh, these uh, three yahoos telling everybody what Anthony Fauci had finally admitted to and then yeah. blaming the mainstream media and us too, now that we're pretty much mainstream, YouTube, Facebook, uh, for uh, deleting everybody else for saying it in the past. We're going to double down and keep deleting. And so this is, this is it for us, okay? The rest of the show is on us right now. We might as well just relax and talk about, I don't know, sports or something. <laughs> By the way, but, it, it, as, as but, far as, for you guys who are listeners, uh, we've actually had a few of our shows that have been uh, yeah, yanked by yes. YouTube just because yes. I didn't like yes. what we said, which is just amazes me. I mean, you know, you don't agree <laughs> with the official narrative. If you don't say everything that's going on with the official narrative, then somehow uh, that that can uh, get you. If I had a cap, I'd be putting a feather in it yeah. right now. Yeah. But in this case, in this particular time, we are we are actually um, uh, amplifying uh, Fauci's uh, oh, yes. you know, direction. <laughs> That's right. <Sorry. laughs> yes, it won't That's... matter. It won't matter to YouTube. They know. They know better than we do. Yeah, we cannot. 
we cannot think for ourselves you know that is that is the main problem here but in furtherance of our of our of us heading down this this path of of of, of not caring about what youtube thinks about this but i don't know if you remember but some time ago when donald trump was still president he and his secretary of state did suggest that this thing might have come out of a lab in china in wuhan china but you know what happened everybody in, in the media in particular oh my goodness these people are so crazy all right especially trump was just a racist a xenophobe for all those things that he was saying about china and about all those things that happened that came out of that lab but now look at what's happening now now all of a sudden the media have found a little bit of religion now and suddenly they have started to tell us well maybe it might have come from the lab fauci himself who originally said oh it's on it's most likely that this came naturally and it jumped from from species to uh, from some species to another to another species that is from a bat to a human or something like that oh that was his first statement now we saying oh you know he have this weak endorsement of the investigation oh yes it should be investigated to find out what happened when he know all along what's going on the the, the N NIH which is National Institute of Health our tax dollars was given to some third party who did end up giving giving um some money to that um, institute in um in, in, in China being done there yeah yeah they gave the uh, and they were doing this gain of function research now I don't know what the hell that is okay I don't know what gain of function it could be talking about unless you're talking about some sort of biological warfare or something like that I don't even know what the hell this is gain of function I keep hearing about it and I don't know what it is but the fact of the matter is something was going on in that lab in China. We don't know what it is, and I'm not going to speculate totally. I'm, I, I could speculate a lot, but I'm not going to do that right now. But there was something going on in that lab in China, and it's about time we find out about this because we need to know what the hell was going on to make sure it don't happen again. Tim, well, we're, Phil, we're, Phil. Dig, we're digging the hole so deep, Tim, that we're going to wind up in China. <laughs> I'm digging right next to that I'm, lab. I'm <laughs> Leon, don't hold back. Just speculate all you want. We're done already, so it just doesn't matter. But I was, I was also thinking when Leon was talking about uh, Trump uh, being accused of racism, it was. I'll tell you why, Leon, because we all know. I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. We all know how good at quality control the Chinese are. I mean, just look at how wonderfully clean their atmosphere is. We all know they are sticklers for quality and always have been. And so to say something like Trump did or now Fauci is saying, that, oh, maybe it leaked out of a lab. A, a lab? Are you kidding? That is so racist. That is just insinuating yes. the Chinese are not sticklers for quality. And when you, well, of course, I got an iPhone, okay? So it's made in China, all right? But yeah, the, there's exceptions to the rule. And I'm sure, and this is a, an example, there you go, of, of quality engineering from the Chinese where they, and they they can. They, I'm not saying they can't, okay? Because I'm not trying to be racist. I'm trying not to be racist, actually. <laughs> So, but uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, never mind. I'm I'm done being silly. This is all for <laughs> not anywho. You know, there's a there's a little bit of an anecdote I wanted to add into this as well. Just thinking about it when you talked about China's standards and how they're a little bit different from ours here in the United States on a lot of things. Judging from I mean, air quality reports, yeah. yes. Well, well, especially since you mentioned air quality, there there was a, a little anecdote I wanted to mention. So uh, as, as many of you may have seen, uh, you know, people in the past, in, in you know, maybe even less than a decade in the past, uh, a little more than that, I guess, have been regularly wearing masks in a lot of the big cities of China. And some of that is because the air quality is so bad. So bad. I mean, yeah. literally, it looks like the city is, uh, some of these are in perpetual fog almost. And there, it, we have what we call here an air quality index. And we'll publish that in our papers. And it's a way people can kind of gauge how healthy the air is every day if they want to go out and, and you know, uh, do stuff. And, you know, usually the, this is somewhere... 
under 100, it's usually considered, ah, this is pretty good, I guess. You know, uh, you know, you would like to see the numbers go lower and lower, and that generally co- corresponds. Okay, the numbers are so high in some of these places in China, they're literally off the charts that we use in this country. <laughs> So that, that tells you how bad some of the stuff is that's going on in some of those places. And I remember reading a story from NPR about 10 years ago or so. And it was, the, the, the country was literally would be telling its citizens on the radio, looks like another cloudy day. <laughs> or not, not cloudy, <laughs> foggy day. Excuse me. Foggy, foggy day. <laughs> exactly. I mean, literally just, just kind of lying to their citizens about yeah. how unhealthy the air was that they were breathing. <laughs> so, so I just just yeah. a side anecdote of, of kind of if, if they do that with their air quality, it makes you kind of it gives you pause on some of these other items, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. How good are they? Uh, you know, clean, cleanliness standards in a lab that has uh, contagious diseases uh, in its uh, inside of it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean. I mean, how would you, you know, you're the worker there at the Wuhan lab and you're walking out into just nastiness because of smog and stuff. So, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it, it's just a cultural thing, you know, <laughs> not yeah. again, it's had nothing to do with race. It's just a cultural thing. And so, you know, there, there's just a, a dropping of your guard in many other ways. I mean, it, it, it is so different than, the way it is in an industrialized nation that we consider advanced, like in Europe and the United States, just different. You know, but but this whole thing, the, the transparency in this the whole this whole uh, pandemic, <laughs> transparency from China have been nothing short of of, of of appalling when you think about it, because recently we just found out that two researchers in that in that very lab that we are the um, is the Institute of Virology, I believe it is. In that very, two of them had some COVID-like symptoms since November or December. We just found that out. Is, is this? Is this? Are, are you? Are you making this up? Are you? Are this you is not speculation. Up? Speculation. When you say November, you say November, December. Are you talking about yeah. 2019 or 2020? 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay, 2020. No, that's you mean way 2019. After I think he so, means 2019. Oh, 2019. I'm sorry. 2019. I just wanted to yeah. clarify that so we know. <laughs> 2019. Get your speculation straight here, Leon. <laughs> yes, get, get my yes. 2019. It, it, it was just discovered in 2019, November or December. There were two researchers from that lab, the Institute of Virology, who had COVID-like symptoms. So it is quite possible. It is quite possible that this lab leak theory is based on solid evidence. It's quite possible. We don't know for sure, and I wouldn't speculate any further, but it sure looks that way. Well, right? it, it sure it, the bottom way. line is, if, if you ever have a, a situation like this, you want there to be the transparency where people go in and they may immediately do a, a, a third party investigation. Not exactly. You know, it's just crazy, the idea that we have it, and we're going to all sit here with a straight face and say, well, we'll we'll just have to trust them. (laughs) Tell me this thing. Tell me this thing. I think think Ronald Reagan was the one who first said, trust but verify. And I think that's what we should do right now. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, COVID issues and some of the craziness that's been going along with those, uh, you know, the prisons have been an area that have been kind of problematic during this whole COVID crisis. Uh, So uh, as you'll remember... Uh, a lot of places in the United States and in some other countries, too, they actually let their prisoners or uh, uh, large numbers of prisoners out in because they weren't sure how to deal with it. I mean, they, they, they had this pandemic and it's like, uh, well, who's going to be responsible if these guys get sick? Uh, you know, and so in, you think, wow, you know, this is literally, you know, how our government handles something. They they put these people in prison mm-hmm. because they're a risk to society. But then when they're suddenly a risk to the prison on are, are we going to be liable if these guys can sit? Let me just let that risk out in this society. And yeah, so, no, you know, they, have- the, the vast majority are put there not because they're a risk to society, but because they're a risk to themselves because they sold dope to somebody. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> or they took dope or something. That's the vast majority. And the, the guy that, well, you're, you're going to tell the story about the guy that's suing the, the California? Well, yeah. And so so yeah. the uh, idea is, uh, aside from the fact that we've let a lot go, there's been uh, some that weren't let go and some did get sick in 
uh, the prisons as people got sick everywhere. You know, right. I mean, it wasn't like this just happened only in prisons. And so uh, a few people yeah. died in the prisons. And yeah. now these prisoners are suing the states uh, where they there's there's lawsuits in California. There's lawsuits all around the country in California and Michigan, and Michigan, many other, other places. places. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And, and so this is, uh, you know, kind of a, a big question uh, and maybe a question for libertarians too to kind of scratch their heads about. But what duty does the state have to prisoners when when somebody has has done something to society to have their rights taken away? Uh, when they essentially when they violated other people's rights, what I guess uh, uh, where where should the the balance fall as far as continuing to protect the public at the expense of the prisoner or allow the prisoner out at the expense of the public? I mean, this is kind of a uh, you know this is a real question, a real world question that potentially leads to crime and other problems in society. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Well, since I've been starting first for a while, uh, the habit is hard to let go of. Um, <laughs> maybe they started thinking, gee, you know, why are we locking these people up for selling marijuana or for selling cocaine or heroin or something? Maybe we really don't need to, after all. It was just a mutually beneficial exchange between willing participants. Uh, is it? Is it, you know, and, you know, uh, if... Oh, guess what? Those mutually beneficial exchanges just continued unabated after we put those people in prison. So it didn't slow it down. It just changed the um, the uh, participants. It just yeah, changed the bodies, the, yes. who it was. You know, yeah. it's like I, I, is is to to think that oh well, oh, nobody's uh, you know snorting coke anymore after the <laughs> you know Joe Blow the salesman got put in prison. Oh, gee whiz, you know, that Coke is not going to be sold to somebody else now that he's not there to sell it, you know. So maybe they th started thinking, you know, maybe some of these laws we have can be post postponed in the sake of, you know, uh, not getting sued. I mean, I, you know, this, the government's not worried about the health of anyone. They're not worried about the health <laughs> of the general public or the safety. They're not worried about this, is my libertarian opinion here youtube now that i'm gone anyway um yeah the the uh they're not <laughs> they're not worried about the health of uh the inmate they are worried about getting sued okay and they're they're thinking they 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 at least knew that much they had that much prescient uh abilities to um to see that they're going to get sued if people got this disease while they were under their custody um, you know, kind of like a kid. It's like, oh, do you have child custody, custody of that child? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and if you do, you probably don't want to give the kid uh, COVID. And the same thing with uh, the uh, the poor, uh, poor innocent <laughs> prisoner for selling dope. Anyway, what do you think, Leon? Well, I mean, I know, I know it is true that, you know, it might be a issue of, you know, people are being in, wrongfully imprisoned for for making voluntary exchanges through selling dope, that kind of stuff. But this this covered covers all prisoners. It's a class action suit mm -hmm. that covers all prisoners. Oh, okay. But I don't think these these lawsuits have a legal leg to stand on. Okay. And then this is just my opinion, YouTube, and, and as a as a as a novice lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> The fact of the matter is, the, the these these people are suing under the um the constitutional pro prohibition against the government about cruel and unusual punishment. Hmm. But the government was not inflicting any cruel and unusual punishment by by the by the infection of, of COVID, because all of us were suffering from the same potentially suffering from the same disease. Mm -hmm. It is not to say it was it was just afflicted upon. Mm -hmm. Prisoners. It's just that they were in a situation where it potentially could spread because in crowded spaces it tends to spread a little more. But these are people who already gave up their liberties, gave up their rights by inflicting their their damage upon other people. That's how they ended up in prison. So they cannot now turn around and sue the government for cruel and unusual punishment when the same thing, the COVID disease, that is. Is afflicting them and is also afflicting us. Yeah, yeah. We are protecting ourselves from from them. Yeah. So I don't true. think this thing has a legal leg to stand on, and I hope 
uh, um, the judges kick this out uh, whenever it gets to court. I hope it is, it is dismissed uh, as soon as possible, even though there are a lot of things I could complain about concerning the COVID and government action, but this is not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a man of principles to me. <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I mean you know, that. This, even though I might be chuckling, I'm. I do mean that sincerely. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Well, you, you Not you know, that anyone will yeah. see this video on YouTube, yeah. but they might. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, you know, there's a, there's a little faith, something, to brother. <laughs> Come on, have some faith. We, we may fight through and live through this. <laughs> You know, there's, there's a little something to both of, of what you guys are saying. I mean, you know, certainly some of these guys who were breaking into cars and stealing cars and being re-released right afterwards because, you know, there's no bail and, and hey, there's COVID uh -huh. and everything else and we put back out of the street. Obviously, that's a person who is violating other people's, uh, you know, liberty. But then on the mm -hmm. other hand, we do imprison an awful lot of people, too, for, um, you know, voluntary exchanges, uh, you know, that, you know, we just... Uh, have a majority that want to push their preference on everybody else and say that some activities, even, even if they're voluntary, shouldn't be legal. So uh, anyways, but, uh, you know, it's funny. There was another story going back to our first one with uh, Fauci and the media and how, uh, you know, stories are just, you know, uh, suppressed or um, shaded in order to support a narrative. And we had a case like that with 60 Minutes uh, in Florida. They were interviewing... Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, and it he wasn't be... interviewed. He wasn't interviewed for the story, but go ahead. Yeah, oh, okay. go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess he was giving a, a press conference. Yeah, and and yes. it had to deal with uh, <clears throat> some of their activities uh, in getting the vaccine out, and they were uh, getting them out through a, a certain chain, uh, and. The 60 Minutes tried to spin the story to make it sound like there was corruption, that uh, this uh, certain chain of stores was getting it because they had a sweetheart deal with the governor. And the governor it clearly explained to them why that stores, that, that chain of stores was getting it early because they were ready to get it early, whereas the others weren't. 60 yeah. Minutes cut all that out of their story so that you didn't hear any of that. And you just heard him kind of, uh, kind of arguing back with the reporter. And you know, that this is just really dangerous what we're seeing with the media where, you know, you, you tow a certain line or you're you're going to be canceled. You're going to be uh, misrepresented, vilified, vilified. Yeah, vilified. And, and yes. this is really dangerous in, in the society. I mean, we have to be able to to have some chance of, of looking at objective information. Uh, it, reporters should be kind of like scientists. They should be trying to collect uh, uh, objective information and present it to us, and it's up for us to figure out what we want to do with that information. It's exactly. Be, this is kind of scary. You guys have any thoughts on it? Take no, it away, Leon. Uh, okay, th thanks, Tim. The chain you're talking about is Publix, Publix, uh, Publix groceries. They are they are they are well known chain in, in Florida. I've, I've been in many of them in in Florida when I go there to, to visit my sister. But the, but the point is though. But the point is though. All the media is trying to do now is to do to Ron DeSantis what, they, what they've been trying to do to Donald Trump all this time. If they can't get him on something actual, they'll make up something to get him on. Now, it is true that Publix gave DeSantis, the DeSantis campaign $100,000. That is true. Nobody's, nobody's disputing that. And the DeSantis campaign is not disputing that either. But what CBS did, what CBS did was they edited they took little pieces of information, little bits and pieces of information, <clears throat> little grains of truth, and they made it into this mismatch of, of this great con cons conspiracy. It was so conspiratorial and so nonsensical, even two Democrats, listen to this, Randy Sanders is a Republican, two Democrats had to come out and defend the man to say how CBS was so corrupt in their reporting. It they, is they, they unbelievable. were Florida Democrats, by the way. It was Florida uh, local yes. Democrats. Yeah. Yes, Florida Democrats. That's right. But yeah. the point is, though, and I think this was in, in, that video, in that video that you sent, it really made this point. The point is, though, these people with their nonsense is really helping Ron DeSantis because they're making him into a martyr of their corrupt reporting and their yellow journalism. That's what's going on there. Okay. Okay. So I'll stop now.
sound of the time for our knucklehead noise patrol where we find something silly, uh, maybe sillier than the stories we've been talking about to, to uh, uh, end the show off on. And in this case, it's uh, uh, it's a uh, MSNBC reporter or anchor, rather, Brian Williams. Uh, and essentially, he was talking about the GOP Senator Ron Johnson. Uh, and he called him essentially a Russian asset because he said he wasn't going to, Ron Johnson said he wasn't going to take the COVID vaccine. And the reason he wasn't going to take the COVID vaccine was because he already had, had been exposed to and had COVID. So he already had the antibodies. And that's why he was going to yes. do what, yes. what William said is he said, I know really smart, educated, substantial people who believe him, Johnson, to be a winning or an unwitting asset of Russia. Uh, who would who who would sound a lot like that in a, in American society? I mean, just you know, everything is Russia, Russia, Russia. Everybody's a Russian asset if you don't go lock, stock, and barrel along with whoever's in charge in the Democratic Party. I just I don't know. You guys have any thoughts? It's, it's almost like there's. I just I just want to mention my favorite virus. <laughs> my favorite Russian asset is Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> 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 Leon, what do you think? Who's your favorite you know, Russian asset? Yeah, you know, you know, Brian Williams. Brian Williams is a reporter. Is a reporter here, and he is a piece of work. You know, this was the guy who lost his anchor job on NBC. Okay, and that's why he's now on MSNBC. He lost his anchor job on NBC, which is probably one of the the most prestigious position that 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 network has. He lost that job because he was lying about how he went somewhere and they landed and they were hit by RPG and all kind of stuff. He made up this whole story about how- He was under he, fire. He, yeah. he was under fire. Under fire. But, but he, braved, <laughs> he braved it and he went out there and you know he still reported on whatever he had to report. This guy lost his job. And now here he is, Ron Johnson, who has a legitimate reason for not taking the, 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 um, the vaccine, which is that he more than likely has antibodies within him, has a very legitimate reason. This is a guy that now is going to turn around and say, oh, you know what? Ron Johnson really and truly is a Russian asset. <laughs> and he didn't say it with the admiration that Tim says about Tulsi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> From Russia with no, love. No. <laughs> and, and he says, run, and let it, run let it be known. the bad kind of Russian asset. <laughs> <laughs> let it be known that Tim admires Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you know, the funny thing is with uh, Brian Williams and that fake news story that he gave so many years ago about being under fire, he just, nobody realized he was just ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so far ahead of the curve, nobody appreciated it at the time, uh, and so he got demoted. <laughs> poor, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I we're, we're a little behind the curve on time at the moment. We're just about out of time, so we're going to have to uh, uh, call it. But thanks so much for joining us on this episode. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere.